Take a break from your busy schedule and join Harold Sala for Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. Question, what does God need? I mean, what does God need to stay alive? Just a minute, you may be thinking. Does God need anything? Well, there's one thing for sure. For humans to exist, certain needs have to be met. You have physical needs, including proper nutrition, clean water, air to breathe, environmental needs too, clothing, shelter over your head to protect you from the elements. There's another layer or level of needs, your emotional needs. They include the need to feel worthwhile to yourself and to others, the need to give and receive love, and certainly the need for a measure of security, which has to include God. There are spiritual needs too. But the question I posed is not what are your needs, but what are God's needs? God is so unlike us in many ways. For example, we get physically tired and exhausted. God never grows weary. We get tired, but God doesn't. We become discouraged. Yet he who knows the end from the beginning never yields to the virus of discouragement. There are times when we need money, but God never runs short on cash. We also live lives that are regulated and controlled by the clock. And often our lives are at the mercy of interruptions that keep us from reaching our goals. But he who was neither created nor is confined to time and space doesn't even have to check the clock to see if there's enough time to get something done. We change, too, for better or worse. But God never does. Listen carefully to what I'm about to say. It's important but hard to grasp. For God to have need of anything would mean he is less than complete. Paul says that in Christ dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. God is no less today than he was yesterday. Tomorrow he will be no more than he is today. He is constant and unchanging. But obviously we are not. This means God is different from us in so many ways. Yet the Bible says you were actually created in his image. So what does that mean? You look like God? You think as he does? You reason and feel? In the account of creation found in Genesis 2, Moses wrote, Then the Lord God formed man of dust from the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. That's the difference. Animals think, and possibly may have emotions, but only you who are made in the image of God will live forever, having been touched by the Almighty. While it is true God has no physical needs that need to be met as we do, yet I believe there is a longing in the heart of the Father which could be described as a need. It is the desire of God the Father to have fellowship with man whom he created. It was for that reason God came and walked with man and communed with him in the garden. Our English word fellowship comes from a word that means to be bound together. The same word was used of the pages of a book which had been compressed and bound together. The Greek word was also used to depict intimacy in marriage. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, said John the Apostle. God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. Ah, yes, it is certain. God is our answer. You've just heard Dr. Harold Sala with Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. If you would like to listen to the program again, download a copy, subscribe to our e-commentary, or view other resources, visit guidelines.org. We would like to hear from you, too. You can email us at info at guidelines.org. That's info at guidelines.org. Thanks for listening, and we invite you to join us again for the next edition of Guidelines. Guidelines.